Hey, if you're like me, experience has taught you that you get what you pay for. So you can imagine my surprise when I found a low cost quality handguard for my AR-15 at just over $100. Today we're gonna look at the Aero Precision Atlas S1 handguard. So this is the Aero Precision Atlas S1. This is a new inexpensive rail offering for the AR platform. Total cost for this was just $130 at the time I picked it up from Primary Arms. I was even able to find a coupon code for free shipping to top it off, so that's always nice. At the end of the video, if you think this rail is going to meet your needs, go ahead and check out the link on my website, tacfix.com, to find it for yourself. So let's do a little unboxing and go over the features of this rail. Included in the box, you're going to have, of course, the rail, and then all of your mounting hardware. We've got a T10 Torx wrench, barrel nut assembly wrench, and then inside this little packet here, we've got our barrel nut, turnbuckle screw for installing the wedge pieces, and then the two wedge pieces. Now, everything you see here is what you're going to need in order to install this apart from a torque wrench. I have my Wheeler Delta Series wrench that we're gonna to use to install this. So let's go over a few features of this handguard. This handguard does come in M-Lock or key mod. I've chosen M-Lock, obviously. You can get it in lengths of seven inches, nine inches, 12 inches, or 15 inches, which is what this one is here. It comes in anodized black or Magpul FTE, so you've got a couple color options. Since the rest of my rifle's FTE, I've chosen Flat Dark Earth for mine. Now one thing that I thought was really cool about this handguard is the top section here at the 12 o'clock position. They've eliminated most of the rail along the top and just left a small portion at the beginning and the end. Now the end that mates up with your upper receiver, it's going to line up directly with the rails on the top of your upper receiver and allow you to mount optics in a position that you like. And then the front section here, the purpose of that is to go ahead and mount your backup iron sights. I really like this design. I think the rib texture gives it a really good grip and a really good feel in the hand. And it also eliminates a lot of unnecessary weight that rails have. I don't know about you, but I'm not an operator. I don't need all the rail section up here. I'm not mounting a magnifier and night vision goggles and all of those extra gadgets. So I don't, I don't need this rail section. So this, this is a perfect offering for me. It lightens the weight. It looks fantastic, and I think it's really going to be a good rail for my AR. Now, like I said, one of the benefits of having this rail section gone off the top is going to be the reduced weight. This rail comes in at just under 8 ounces, and in fact, the key mod setup is actually just slightly less. Now, another cool feature of this handguard is that it does include QD attachment points at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock position. Another thing to note is, obviously, given how slim this handguard is, you are going to need to get a low-profile gas block. The outer diameter of this is one and a half inches, inner diameter is 1.3 inches, according to the Aero Precision website, so it is going to require a pretty small gas block on this. The Aero Precision website also says this should be compatible with all mil-spec uppers and compatible with some billet uppers, including those from Aero. So I would say, based on my research here, I definitely I have a mil-spec upper, it's just a typical forged upper. If you do have billet, I would maybe steer away from this one until you've had a chance to test fit, maybe find a store that has one in stock local to you. Or if you don't mind buying and then returning, you can go ahead and do that. But they do state that some billet uppers will not be supported by this. Now one thing you can do is get the billet receivers directly from Arrow. They do state on their website that their billets are compatible with this with one exception. For the sake of time, I've gone ahead and installed our barrel nut. The only thing you really have to know about this particular barrel nut, apart from any other barrel nut, is the manufacturer does call for this to be tightened to 30 to 60 foot-pounds of torque. One thing you want to make sure of as you're tightening the barrel nut is that you line up one of these horizontal grooves with the gas port hole on the top of your upper receiver. This will allow the gas tube to go ahead and flow straight through here and line up with one of those horizontal grooves. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and install our handguard. So we're going to flip this over so that we've got this upside down so you can get a better look at the wedge-shaped pieces while we install this.
So I'm going to go ahead and get my rear sight put back on, get my front sight put on, and then go ahead and get my muzzle device reinstalled, and then we'll join you back up top. Alright guys, so back up top for my final thoughts. Overall, I think this is a great rail. There are a couple little nitpicks that I have here. Um, obviously the turnbuckle system with getting that installed was a little bit of a pain, but I think it's going to be a secure mounting method. And honestly, how often do you take off your handguard? I don't think it's going to be a real big con for this. So I think overall that one's just fine. The only other really big qualm I have with this is the QD attachment points. There are none up in the front. I would have liked to have seen at least one, maybe on the underside up front. They are all delegated to the rear, which isn't a major turnoff, but it is something that I kind of would have liked to see in this. Um, but for a $100 offering, a little over $100, I think this is going to be a great rail. Fit and finish look great. Um, it is advertised as being Magpul Flat Dark Earth, and it is, it is a perfect match for the rest of my Magpul stuff. So we don't have that kind of FN scar two-tone thing going on, which a lot of people don't like. Um, I think it looks kind of neat on that particular gun, but on this one we've got, we've got great matching on the color, so I think that's, that's going to be really good here. Um, other thing is everything, everything is to spec, everything lines up well once you've got everything dialed in and you've got it all put together. So fit and finish are great, and you know, I, guys, I'm really digging the ribs on the top here. Um, they really do provide a good place for you to get a nice firm grip on here. Um, so I think this is going to be a really good shooter. I'll take this out to the range hopefully this weekend and uh, put in the comments what I, what my thoughts are after taking it to the range. But so far, I think this is going to be really good. All right, guys. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, definitely hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see all the latest videos as they come out. And if you have a chance, check out my website, tacfix.com or my GunStreamer channel, gunstreamer.com slash at tacfix where you'll get all my videos as well. And once again, if you guys do choose to purchase something out of one of the links down below in the description, that does give this channel a little bit of support and it's greatly appreciated. Anything you can do to help support this channel means we can keep bringing great content to you. And as always, if you do purchase something, we do get a small commission off of that. So that's kind of how it helps support us. So there are affiliate links built into that. So that is all I have for you guys tonight. Thank you again so much for watching and have a good night, guys.